Randy, I wanted to make a quick video just to say thank you for sending the stickers. I really appreciate it. I'm going to put it in a place of honor right here. You've been one of the biggest inspirations for me to not only start beekeeping and removing bees from structures, but also to start a YouTube channel about it. So I really appreciate you sending this sticker. It's going to go right here on the side of my Everything Bee Vac, which is also another thing that you inspired me to buy. So thank you for it. And guys, for those watching, if you're not subscribed to The Dirt Rooster, I really don't know what you're doing with your life. Randy has some of the best content on YouTube related to honeybees. So check him out and subscribe. Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. Today we're going to do a little something different. I'm going to show you something more along the lines of what a contractor would do on one of these cutouts. Right now I'm standing out here with my Pierce uncapping tank, feeding some bees, some crush comb from a giant hive removal we did that I did not record, but I'll show it to you. Look here, late on a fall afternoon, it's kind of cool outside. We don't have a heck of a lot of activity on this comb, but feeding back what didn't, what didn't drain out of it. Flip that over and let them get access to what's in the bottom. They can crawl out from under all this light stuff that fell on them. That don't hurt nobody. But I'll refine all this down and turn it into, back into some nice light colored. Uh, it'll end up being maybe that color after I refine it down. That was the Pierce uncapping tank that we use for all of our crush and strain operations now. Love that thing. I'll put the link in the description if you want to go check their products out. I want to do something a little different on this video. Everybody likes to see those massive, glorious giant hives, and we show enough of those through the year. I'm going to show you something that we show or that we see three to four to five times a year. That's just really, this could be a nasty one. But somebody has to do these jobs and we do them. And sometimes we do repairs. We get a lot of questions about who does repairs when we cut someone's house open. Well, sometimes it's us. In this case it was, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that at the end of it, at the video. We're starting on a high removal in this bay window today. We got honey puddles. In the window, we also got small hive beetle larvae crawling around in the house. Hold up, hold up. Bees in the room. <laughs> yep. No, we got comb falling right here. It's, it's laying on top of the ceiling. Oh, man. Just running. We don't have nothing we can reach back there. And I hold a guard. You got a pry bar or something? No, I don't have anything. Well, I do have a nail bar. If you want to hold it, I'll go ahead and get yeah, it. Yeah, I got it. There's some two bottles laying on the side. I figured they would be. I just didn't think they'd be here. I figured they'd be over here. That's the way I would have built it. Yeah, there ain't much left of this colony. I don't, know, I don't think we're even going to need to vac. Uh, I don't know. I see comb hanging way up in there. I can't see what it's all about though. You're gonna have to take that second piece out just to get us in there. Cause it's all over here. Yuck. Come on, step up there, big boy. <laughs> She's not gonna see all Yeah, I can't here. stand up there. It's too short. Get you hitting that hole now. I mean, I get your ego in, but your head should fit. <laughs> <laughs> Piece Dead hive. It should give us room to work. That's why you don't do these for free. Because <laughs> they're nasty. And you're not getting free bees out of it, are you? No. There's not enough bees here to even aggravate us. Now, if we want to grow high beetles, <laughs> we in the money. Yeah. <laughs> it was honey loaded before the high beetles got in it. I think this is just what's left of the colony. There's really 100 bees left. Maybe it's wiping honey as we go, but check all this out. You know what that is? That's roach poop. It's saturated insulation. Coming out of here too now. Stains on the ceiling. Okay. The comb started here. Goes all the way over to the corner. And they've been nibbling on the, the board too, the vacuum board. It goes all the way to out 
ball. Okay, when we get this other piece out, we'll get better access. You ain't gonna bend over as much. I don't know if you can really see from this angle, but that whole window frame, roof and floor is dropping. It's got a sag to it, and the roof line where it meets the wall of the house is pulling away. That's how these bees got in. Let y'all see what kind of a person Pete is. <laughs> Pete just <laughs> scraped maggots out the ceiling. Pete's just fine. <laughs> He's got, we got maggots falling out of the ceiling. So he's lining tools up in the window for me to get <laughs> to get up in there and finish this thing. I did the nasty stuff. <laughs> yeah, this window is kind of breaking over. It's a shelf. There's not any real support under it. It wasn't structurally built properly. So we've got the ladder with some cribbing on the ladder, kind of holding it so we can step on the bottom down here. Two twenty. Without fear of breaking it down. <clears throat> You're 220? Mm -hmm. No, you ain't. Well, yeah, I am. Can't get Rick weed recently. I don't doubt that I've got a little more on me than I'm used to. Man, that was a lot of good honey in this thing until the maggots got on it. Just dragged out a good half a bag of cruddy comb and honey and pieces of a squirrel's nest. We're calling it that. Yeah, we're calling it that. <laughs> it's, like, it's a squirrel's nest. And we gotta, we gotta dry up all the honey that's up in the ceiling so it doesn't leak through and stain even any further. The honey was dripping when we got here. It was running down the windows on both sides. I had my hands full or I would have showed you my hand a while ago. It was covered with honey and beetle maggots. Well, the piles in there are moving. I can barely see it, but they're moving. It's repair time. We're going to flat finish that ceiling. The rest of it, popcorn texture, as you can see. This little ceiling and this bay window, we're just going to flat finish. Is it running yet? Oh yeah, you already got it running. J hook high tool. So like I said in the video, we repaired the sheetrock, flat finished that whole little uh, bay window ceiling and painted that ceiling. That's all the work we did on the inside. We did pack that whole space back with fiberglass insulation. So on the outside of this house, the day we did the removal, there was a, about an inch wide gap all the way across the top of that uh, bay window where it touched that, where it used to touch the brick veneer. We filled that with mortar and brick caulk and Pete and I kind of played with the colors of the mortar and the brick caulk to try to match it as best we could. And it's, it's a little light, but it doesn't really stand out. And it was a lot lighter to start with. We can't, I came back a few times to try to, mosquitoes, to try to appease the homeowner as best I could. So that's as close as we could get it. But the whole thing, the whole bay window had settled about an inch and three quarters. And I squared it off the brick veneer and took some measurements and I could tell it's about, it had dropped about an inch and three quarters over the decades since it was built. So what I did on that was I brought it back up as far as I could without busting it apart or doing any, any additional damage. I did that with a couple of hydraulic jacks under either corner with some pads under it. And I, I was able to bring it up about three quarters of an inch. And those, those are four by six posts under the bottom of it. And it didn't need that much meat to hold up that little bay window, but four by fours was too small. And I was kind of trying to match the width of that fluted trim down the outsides of the windows. So I went with a four by six, turning the six wide. And then some two by 12s are sandwiched on either side of those four by sixes and I made a block to fit up under that window. I jacked the window up. The four by sixes are set in concrete. After that concrete had set, I jacked the window up and screwed those two by 12s or two by 10s maybe in place. And that, that held the whole structure. So it's all sitting on four by sixes with lag screws in the side to catch the concrete so it doesn't get over the years, get pushed down through a concrete block further into some mud. 
So it's got lag screws sticking out into concrete. And that's how I leveled that window up, caulked it a little bit. Somebody's painted it since we did the job because I left it in raw treated material. And somebody's come back and painted those, those uh, studs that I put. Stanchions, stool, whatever you want to call them. They're there and they're not going anywhere. That window will be there when the rest of the house falls in. But uh, that's, that's the uh, contractor side of doing these jobs is making sure they don't have this problem again. Because if I just removed that hive and said, hey, you know, find somebody to fix it, you got a hole in the top. I guarantee you somebody's gonna come back, come back out there, expanding foam, silicone caulk, something around the top edge of that dormer or around the top edge of that uh, bay window roof, not really do a good repair, not ever structurally fix it. And the, the house would have that problem again. Once you've had a hive like that in a space, it's gonna always attract bees. Even now it'll attract bees in the springtime that smell that. There's not really much you can do to get rid of that smell aside from burn that side of the house down, <laughs> reframe it something that smells always there. So the best you can do is seal everything. If you keep it sealed, they can't get back in and do your structural repairs, cosmetic repairs, keep it from rotting, do all your paint, your caulk, make sure you don't have rot problems anytime soon. And that's the best you can do for them people. Uh, it's up to them to do continued maintenance. And if they do that, they won't have this problem no more. Have a beautiful repair on a nice little house and she, this uh, customer was in her 80s, early 80s. That uh, house probably, that's her forever home. She was in good shape. She might be there in her 90s, but that'll all be in good shape when the family has to take that house and do something with it. They won't be going, I wonder who worked on this thing. And now we got to rebuild this whole bay window because somebody, you know, I did my part. Thank you all for watching. Now I got to go put the chickens up. It's starting to get dark. We've had some coon problems lately, so we gotta be on top of making sure these chickens are locked up. We got babies on this side. We let them run loose inside the whole pen during the day. There's mama. One of the mamas, that big black one over here is the other mama, and you can tell which baby's hers. <laughs> That's a frizzle. And she's a, a naked neck, you can see. She doesn't have any fur on her neck. Doesn't have any feathers on her neck. I don't know what the rest of these are, but that's another frizzle chicken over there. And these have been the mama to all these little babies. And there's daddy out there. Come on, Kai, time to go to bed. We we'll keep them. A little fan running on them during the night, keep the mosquitoes down, keep the mosquitoes off of them.